A very good evening and welcome to this Sunday's edition of News First Weekend coming to you live from our news studios in Colombo. I'm Arundhati Mudar Nayaka. Let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Convoys bearing sacred relics from Mihintale and Kandy begin their journey to the Sirasa John Keels International Vesak Zone. Dengue on the rise in Colombo. Disease claims the life of a mother. An attempt to shut down the anti-corruption committee secretariat comes to light. Civil activists say the move is suspicious. A new revelation by Minister Mangala Samaravira. Minister Dr. Rajita Senaratna comments on a ministerial shake-up. Now the story is in detail. The number of dengue patients in hospitals, including the National Hospital, IDH Hospital, Javadhanapura Base Hospital and the Kalubovila Teaching Hospital has increased over the past five months. 19, 19 individuals succumb to the deadly disease, while the number of confirmed dengue cases increased to 40,000. The dengue disease claimed the life of a mother today. 26-year-old Nadika Madhushani was a mother of one from the Manel Gama area in Kalania. She had been receiving in-house treatment at the IDH hospital for the past three days before finally succumbing to the disease, leaving behind an 11-month-old infant. There have been six others from my village who fell victim to the disease. There were two children who suffered from the same disease. Eventually, my infant lost his mother. <laughs> the number of dengue patients reported from the Colombo district over the past five months stood at 9,278. 5,485 dengue patients were reported from the Gampaha district, while a further 4,095 dengue patients were reported from the Trincomalee district. The total number of dengue patients reported over the past five months stands at 42,144. Of this number, 40.89% of the patients are from the western province. 250 patients are currently receiving treatment at the IDH hospital, 150 at the Shrija Wardhanapura hospital, while a further 140 dengue patients are receiving treatment at the Colombo South Teaching Hospital. Deputy Director of the Colombo National Hospital, Dr. Cyril De Silva, speaking to News First, said that over 90 suspected dengue patients are currently receiving treatment at the National Hospital. He further noted that 20 suspected dengue patients are admitted to hospital on a daily basis. The death toll is currently between 75 and 80. We have not been able to finalize this value. A large number of dengue patients continue to be reported from the Colombo, Gampaha, Kalutara, Batiklo, Trincomalee, Jaffna, Gaul, Matara, Kurunagala and Putlam districts. Deputy Director of Health Services Dr. Anil Jasinga notes that the number of dengue patients could increase in the coming days. The spread of dengue increased this year earlier than expected. Usually dengue is reported in the months of June and afterwards. So we have concerns about the situation that could be prevalent over the next few months. Dengue is spreading. It is in such a backdrop that trade union actions are being launched by doctors. These are not medical problems. These are academic problems. The joint opposition hopes to starve the country of investments by stopping the port deal with China, the oil tank deal with India and CITEM. Most people are working with this political agenda in mind. The journey of the sacred relics and the relics of the Arahats, which will be displayed at the Sirsa John Keels International Vesak Zone, commenced today from Kandy and Mihintale. The vehicular processions carrying the relics on both routes reach Kurunagala and Ranwala, respectively, this evening. Religious rituals were observed at the Mihintale Rajama Viharia this morning prior to the departure of the procession carrying the sacred relics. Mihintale is of great historic significance for Buddhism in Sri Lanka, considered the location where the Dhamma was first preached. The relics of the Arhan Sariputta and Mogollana, which are held in trust by the Sri Lanka Mahabodhi Society, and the sacred relics from the Sandagiri Mahasaya in Tisamaharama were brought to the Mihintale Rajama Vihare yesterday. The vehicular procession carrying the relics of the Arhans, including Arahan Mahinda, departed this morning.
For the first time in Sri Lanka, all of these holy and sacred items have been brought to Mihintale. While Mr. Raj Mahendran may not be Buddhist by birth, he is supporting this meritorious deed with Buddhist feelings and thoughts representing all of the communities and religions of this country. He has given the people of this country the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to pay homage to all these sacred relics in one location at the Sirasa Vesak zone. I am happy to be present at this rarest of occasions. With the fullest support of the Capital Maharaja organization, the message of the Dhamma of Lord Buddha will be carried across the world. World leaders including the Prime Minister of India will be coming to Colombo and Kandy and will celebrate this occasion with all of the people of Sri Lanka, both Buddhist and non-Buddhist. I am proud that the relics of Sariputta and Mogallana are leaving for the Sirasa International Vesak Zone from the sacred grounds of Mihintale. Shortly before Arhant Mahinda came to Sri Lanka, he was at the Chaitagiri Vihare in Sanchi and these relics were found in the three stupas there. We invite all devotees to participate in the meritorious endeavor. The Sirasa Vesak zone has become a key feature of Vesak celebrations across the country. We are indeed blessed to be able to participate in such an event. As officers of the Navy and sailors, we consider it a great mark of respect to be able to join hands with the Sirasa Media Network at this historic occasion here in Mihintale. We consider it a great boon and a mark of respect for me and our company to be able to participate in this meritorious deed. We will not think twice about joining hands with the Sirasa Vesak Zone. The employees of John Kills and all its affiliates including Elephant House, Union Assurance, John Kills Automation and Kills Supermarkets will extend their support to this. At present, we do not have the opportunity to fall at Lord Buddha's feet and worship him. Today, the Capital Maharaja Organization and the Sirasa Media Network, John Kills and the Sri Lanka Navy have been able to bring Lord Buddha and the Arahants, including Arahant Mahinda, to one location. I call on all the people of this country to participate in this momentous occasion. <laughs> The vehicular parade travelled from Mihintale to Kurunagala via Anuradhapura, Talava and Tambuttegama with floral tributes pouring in from the public. Meanwhile, sacred relics from the Nelligala International Buddhist Center in Kandy also commenced their journey to the Sirasa John Kills International Vesak Zone today amid the blessings of the Mahasangha. Instead of simply being put on display, the people of Sri Lanka will now have the opportunity to worship these sacred relics at the Sirasa John Kills Vesak Zone. We are especially grateful and invoke blessings on the chairman of the Capital Maharaja organization, Mr. Raja Mahendran, for gifting this Vesak Zone to the nation. The Sirasa Media Network was initiated at this premises of the sacred temple of the Tooth Relic. As one of the monks who conducted the rituals, I recall how King Sri Ratnaika greeted everyone and carried out this task in the Hevisi chamber. 
We are thankful that they have organized this to promote the sasana among the people. Arahant Mahinda and King Tissa spoke of returning to Dambadiva to see Lord Buddha. We all know that when Arahant Mahinda came to Sri Lanka, it was after the Parinibbana of Lord Buddha. Arahant Mahinda explained to the king that while Lord Buddha had attained Parinibbana, his sacred relics are at Dampadiva. This is what he meant when he said they would visit Lord Buddha. It was to worship his relics. <laughs> All preparations have been made with the participation of the staff of multiple companies and with the guidance of the Mahasangha to carry out this task successfully. It is our intention to bring happiness to the people of Sri Lanka who will be visiting this Vesak zone. We wish to extend our gratitude to the Mihintale Rajama Viharya, the Sri Lanka Mahabodhi Society, the Tissa Maharama Rajama Viharya, the Nelligala International Buddhist Centre, the Sri Lanka Navy and the Capital Maharaja Organisation Limited. You may remember that in previous years the Navy has participated in the series of Vesak Zone through lantern exhibitions, organizing dancers and various other ways. But this year, the Sri Lanka Navy has decided to support the series of Vesak Zone further. May all of those who were involved in bringing all of these sacred relics to one place more than 2,000 years after the Parinibbana of Lord Buddha attain Nirvana. The procession carrying the sacred relics travelled from Yatihalagala to Pelimathalava and on to Ranwala via Kadugannava and Mavanalla. Thousands of devotees turned out to pay floral tributes. This is a meritorious date. We are very happy. Several national newspapers have reported that plans are afoot to shut down the anti-corruption secretariat. Civil society organizations have voiced opposition to the move. Quoting a senior spokesperson for the government, the newspapers reported that a decision has been made to wind down the operations of the anti-corruption secretariat as it was not fulfilling expectations and because it was wasting government funds. It was also reported that the decision had been taken due to the overreach of certain officials at the secretariat. However, the anti-corruption secretariat says that it has received about 400 complaints thus far and that all these complaints have been directed to the Police Financial Crimes Investigation Division, the Criminal Investigation Department and the Commission to Investigate Allegations of Bribery or Corruption. These complaints include matters pertaining to ministers and MPs of the former regime and ministers, MPs, ministry secretaries and department heads of the current government. The director of the secretariat, Anand Vijaypala, rejected all allegations raised through the newspaper reports. Vijaypala says that if there are any complaints regarding officials at the secretariat, complaints should be filed and proper investigations must be held. The anti-corruption secretariat was established on the 19th of February 2015 to assist the anti-corruption committee, which had been appointed to probe allegations of serious fraud and corruption under the previous regime. The Anti-Corruption Committee was appointed on a recommendation from the National Executive Council and is chaired by Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe. The members of the committee include Opposition Leader R. Sambandan, Ministers Patali Champika Ranuwaka, Rauf Hakim, Malik Samara Wickrama and Sarath Fonseka, MPs Dr. Jayampati Wickramaratna and M.A. Sumandiran and Attorney at Law J.C. Valiamuna. While the Secretariat's term was initially for six months, it has been extended periodically since then. The current term will expire on the 30th of June. On a number of occasions, we met with the Prime Minister and complained that no action is being taken against corruption. He responded on all these occasions by saying that they work according to the law. However, current revelations have cast doubts on his claims. 
The law-abiding citizens of the country voted on the 8th of January to create a country where the rule of law is supreme. What did the Prime Minister do all this time? Was it merely a media charade? On the 9th of January, Ranil Vikramasinghe, accompanied by Thiru Nadeshan, met with Mahindra Rajapaksa. Why did Thiru Nadeshan accompany Ranil Vikramasinghe? On whose side is Thiru Nadeshan today? This is a warning to the Prime Minister. We also call on the President to direct his attention to this. If the anti-corruption secretariat is closed down, this will impact the FCID. It could lead to the collapse of the FCID as well. This is the same secretariat where complaints were lodged regarding both the previous regime as well as the current government. Complaints regarding the bond scam were lodged with the anti-corruption secretariat. Have the rogues of the Rajpaksa government reached an accord with the rogues of this government to sweep all this under the carpet? There is a clear attempt to block the investigations into corruption by both the Rajapaksa government and officials of this government, which calls itself the Good Governance Government. A government that came into power to crack down on corruption, charging officials who discharge their duties on anti-corruption of exceeding their mandate, is a matter of concern. If the government wants, it could shut this down, but it is not fair to lay blame on the officials. This is very similar to what happened to me. The foundation stone was laid for a relics chamber in Sangavasa at the Nava. Nara Vihare in Mavramandiya by the State Minister of Defence Ruan Vijayvardhana. The chief incumbent of the Vidya Lankar Pirivari in Paliguda, Venerable Balamitiyave Kusalananda Thera, was present at the event. The State Minister was questioned on security detail of the former president as well as the future of the UNP. <laughs> No, it is not because of the May Day. We were in discussion with the State Intelligence Service as well for a long period of time. We inspected and they too informed us that there is no need for such a large security team. That is why this decision was reached. This is not a political decision or an act of revenge. There are suggestions to make Sarat Fonseca the deputy leader of the party. The working committee will decide on that. <laughs> there are various opinions. That is the nature of a political party. When certain people receive positions, others are affected. We can discuss those matters and resolve them. <laughs> <laughs> I did not enter into politics with that in my mind. My only aspiration is to work for the people of this country. The people will decide who the leadership should be given to. That is a decision of the people. Taking a look at another one of our headline-making stories, Minister Mangala Samaravira attending an event in Matara stated that he will reveal details of a suspicious deal between the former government and the former Prime Minister of Libya, Muammar Gaddafi. A Balamandala meeting of the United National Party was held at the Cooperatives Auditorium in Matara today. He went to Libya and embraced Gaddafi. Even before a year passed, Gaddafi was destroyed. Something was done to Gaddafi. They had obtained a loan from Gaddafi. That money had gone into a personal account of a family member. That is all I will say for now. Because we associated leaders rejected by the whole world, the whole world looked down on us. The minister spoke further on what was left behind by the former government. When we took over the government back in 2015, Mahindra Rajapaksa and the band of thieves left us with three massive trash mountains. One was a mountain of dead bodies. There were slain journalists, human rights activists, they murdered Tamils under the guise of the LTTE, they killed Muslims and that had piled up to be a mountain. Then there was a mountain of debt. They had given a number of things on lease and provided more things in billions to foreign nations. We inherited this mountain of debts as well. The third was the mega garbage mountain in Mithotamulla. This ruined the whole country. The minister expressed the following views regarding the May Day rallies. What is the topic now? It is the May Day. 
That was a good May Day rally. It was successful. There was a massive crowd. But our May Day rally was even more successful. What is more important is the day of the election. We showed twice what we are capable of on election day. If Maitri Pala Sirisena, the SLFP and the UNP join together, we can fill the goal face fivefold. That is not what we use to measure the number of people we have. Last week, Basil Rajapaksa said that he is a citizen of America and that his family is there. Gotabe Rajapaksa is also a resident of USA. Both of them are US passport holders. We saw what happened to Geeta. Both of these people cannot contest elections. The foundation stone for a new bridge across the main canal in Dutugamunapura, Lunugamvera, was laid today under the auspices of Minister Sajid Premadasa. A total of 29.2 million rupees will be spent under the Samata Sahana program for the construction of the bridge. <laughs> We received a valuable gift from India, ambulances for a free ambulance service. What did the opposition say? They criticized us saying that we were using Indian ambulances and not local ambulances. The theme earlier was the closest bar was the best bar. The closest wine store was the best wine store. We have been able to change that to the closest school is the best school. The 110th batch of students for the English program at the Jinnuratara Technical College attached to the Ganga Rama Temple in Hunupitiya was enrolled today. The chief incumbent of the Ganga Rama Temple in Hunupitiya, Venerable Galabodanyani Saratera, and members of the Mahasangha were present at the event. Professor GRP Surya Perma and Kalashuri Edwin Dasa attended the event as special guests. The children who received education from this institution, especially English education, are now working at state and private sector companies at high positions. They are working as directors and even secretaries. This English institution has become a prominent institution in the country. Also from Ahedal Making Stories, the foundation stone for the six-story building at the nurse tra- Nurses Training School in Anuradhapura was laid today by Health Minister Bajit Asena Ratna. The estimated cost for the proposed building is 950 million rupees. The minister responded to questions posed by the media subsequent to the function. Certain social media websites say that public health officers who come during the night to check blood for filaria are actually members of ISIS who come to inject you with HIV. This is a lie. There were no such reports. This is just false propaganda aimed at sabotaging this program. We lodged a complaint with the CID through the director of the file area combating unit. An investigation will be carried out and the culprits will be brought before the law. <coughs> there is an allegation against you on Facebook that you don't take medicine from Sri Lanka but you travel overseas for medical treatments. I need to go to the person who performed my surgery for follow-up examinations. I did not go to get any medicine. They charge that such a person is the country's health minister. Yes, it was decided on the situation at hand. The president was not in the country. The prime minister was there. He was the one who decided that I should be taken out of the country. Two were dead by that time. It was not a decision based on the medical condition, rather a decision based on security reasons. Minister John Seriviratna made a public statement that you will be removed from your cabinet ministerial post. How can it chase me from the ministerial post? We are the ones who came to form this government. He was someone who came and sat in the government that was already formed. I don't engage in politics with my feet on two sides. I keep my feet in one place. I state my stance. Those who have their feet on both sides don't have this. This was discussed in the cabinet when you were absent. Yes, that was because I was not there. You said that a force will be built under Minister Sarat Fonseca, now within the government itself. It is all right. The President and I spoke with Sarat Fonseca once again. We discussed in detail as to how this will be formed even after they raised objections. Therefore, I only speak the reality and not what certain people say here and there. The government has not taken any steps to educate the public about this so far. Yes, we agree we have failed in that aspect. Some say that there will be changes in high-profile ministries as well as the post of Defence Secretary. Wait till tomorrow. It is only 24 hours. A heated argument broke out this evening in Norwood Hatton between two groups of political supporters. The argument broke out between supporters of the Ceylon Workers' Congress and the Tamil Progressive Alliance. Both groups had used vehicles to block the road. 
News first received this footage of the incident. <laughs> The CWC has lodged a complaint with the police claiming that the group, including supporters of the minister of Minister Palani Digambaram, had blocked the road and had obstructed them from carrying out their work. The police say that investigations into the incident are underway under the supervision of an assistant superintendent of police. <laughs> Good People, a social network in Sri Lanka, initiated a clean-up project at Adams Peak in a bid to create awareness on the proper disposal of garbage and the protection of the environment. The clean-up project was held over the weekend with volunteers of Good People ascending and descending Adams Peak collecting undisposed garbage. Devotees making the pilgrimage to Siripada also joined in and assisted the volunteers in this task. Well, that's a look at Primetime News for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night.